From its early days, KiCad has supported multiple operating systems. When I started using KiCad in version 4, I used it on Windows, Mac OS and Linux, and specifically Ubuntu. However, back then there were differences between those platforms that had to do with mostly reliability, but also quite annoying differences in the way that the user interface worked. And uh, back then I found that Windows was generally working better, so I tended to use that more than anything else. Since KiCad 6, however, KiCad now seems to be working flawlessly and seamlessly on all three operating systems that I have tested. And specifically, again, it's macOS, Windows 10 and 11, and Linux Ubuntu 22.04. And I spent a lot of time comparing the three. My testing consisted of a single project that I opened and edited across the three operating systems. And I used KiCad's feature here in the file archive project and then unarchive the same project on the other operating systems. And after that, just opening the various applications and see how they differ and if at all they differ between the operating systems. So what you're seeing here is KiCad, the currently latest available version is 8.0.3 and I've got it installed on Mac OS so it's running natively on Mac OS and then I have two virtual machines in this one here I've got Windows 11 that is also running uh, KiCad let's see version 8.0.3 which I downloaded this morning and finally I've got Ubuntu which is running, let's see, a version from this morning, 8.0.3. So the identical kickout version on the three operating systems. I've got two virtual machines and one native instance of kickout running. On all three, I have opened the MCU project from this course. Just a short interruption to let you know that this video is part of my comprehensive KiCad course that will teach you every aspect of creating printed circuit boards with KiCad from scratch. Go to the course page to learn more about it if you want. Find the link to the course page in the description below and treat yourself with a discount coupon for my YouTube viewers. Okay, let's continue with the video. So let's do a quick comparison. You already know that, as I mentioned earlier, the user interface and the way that KiCad works across these three operating systems is pretty much identical. I can't see that many differences. There are, of course, differences that have to do with the operating system itself. For example, how to navigate the file system and what the file system looks like. It's different in Windows. You can see it down here. This is the project path for Windows and the same project path for Linux and the Mac. It just looks differently, but that's not to do with KiCad. This has to do with the operating system. So here is the, the way that the main window in KiCad looks like. So Mac on the left, Windows 11 on the right, and Ubuntu on the right again, pretty much identical. Let's have a look at the schematic editor. So here is this project in the schematic editor in macOS. I'm just going to change the size of the window to make it fit a little bit more comfortably so that we can also see what that looks like in Windows on the right side. Loading up and there it is. I'm just going to close the side panels and it looks like this. So it looks the same actually. <laughs> I'm just going to change the background color to make it white just for the sake of comparison. So under preferences, preferences, then colors. And let's change that to white background. Okay. And now it pretty much looks the same. Let's go into one of the properties for this symbol. So that's U1. It looks like this. And U1 on the Mac looks like this. One interesting thing is that on Windows, this window is resizable. On the Mac, yep, it is also resizable. So they go pretty much the same as expected. And under Ubuntu, 
Let's open up the same project. I will maximize it. Uh, one thing to notice is that the resolution on Windows in this virtual machine is Retina, whereas is not Retina on Ubuntu. So again, that is not really an issue with KiCad, but with, it's just that I have not enabled Retina display type resolution in my Ubuntu virtual machine, but it looks the same. And again, I'm going to change the background color so that it is white. I'll have to just create a new theme, Peter's theme and change the background. Let's make that white. Okay, all right. So let's have a look at the symbol properties for U1. Move that to the side so we can compare with the Mac, if possible. See if I can resize it. Nope. But anyway, you can see that it's, it's the same. It's got the same features. Uh, there's some slight differences in the coloring of the user interface, but all of the options, the buttons, etc., are all present. Pin functions and so on, just slightly different positions. So that's the schematic editor. Now let's do the same with the PCB editor. Just going to close, discard changes, and on the Mac, I will turn on the PCB editor or start the PCB editor. Resize it. Okay, zoom in. And uh, here, let's do Linux first, PCB editor on Linux. You've got the layers on the side. I just enlarge the appearance pane so we can see there's objects and nets. There's the presets down the bottom and the selection filter. The pane on the left with the properties. All that exactly as it looks like on the Mac as well. The user interface in Linux is, of course, Linux-like. It uses the, the native widgets and styling, but the functionality is all there. So I make this go away, open up the properties, and you can see that that works as expected. And similarly on the Linux side, it looks pretty much the same in terms of functionality and where things are means that you'll be able to jump from one operating system to the other with Linux and not have to relearn anything. Let's have a look at what the PCB editor looks like in Windows. There it is. Interesting, I've got a white background. I probably did up a bit of printing here in PCB New recently, and that's why the background is white. But let's go to Preferences and colors and let's use keycard classic which is what i'm using on mac os and it looks like this again appearance is uh, familiar it's pretty much the same layout as in the mac we've got the properties on the other side same thing status indicators at the bottom navigation and toolbars are all the same all right, so that's a PCB editor. Let's have a look at one more thing before I finish with this video and let's have a look at some of the preferences and settings. So I'll close the PCB editor and open up the schematic editor. And here I'll go into the schematic setup and have a look at the violation severity and the pin conflicts map. See what that looks like in the other operating systems. So in Windows, Close PCB editor, open the schematic editor, open up the preferences and have a look at pin conflicts map. It looks identical and the menus are all there. The options and the way that this works is also the same. Just click to change. And finally in Linux Ubuntu, close, open up the schematic editor, and then under the uh, schematic preferences, there's a conflicts map, same thing here, works in the exact same way, all familiar layout, 
with slightly different colors and uh, a more Ubuntu-like native user interface. So the quality of the implementation of KiCad in the three operating systems that I've tested is really excellent. This means that solo users and teams can confidently use KiCad and edit the same projects across platforms. So if you are in a team in particular, then your team members can work on KiCad on their preferred operating system and still be able to collaborate with no issues whatsoever.